Hello everybody, I'm here with this week's Sunday Thought for the Day um, and we're going to start with the uh, Bible reading for this passage for today which is Matthew 15 verses 21 to 28 so that's Matthew 15 verses 21 to 28 Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon just then a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him saying, Lord, help me. He answered, it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, yes, Lord, but even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. So that's the uh, main Bible passage for today and it's quite a, an intense one it's this kind of interaction between Jesus and this Canaanite woman and um, it has a lot of sort of theological importance um, it's a subject of much debate so kind of the biggest question about this passage is to do with the fact that Jesus seems to kind of change his mind as a result of the argument discussion with this Canaanite person. So um, it's to do with the how can Jesus be fully human and fully God question. Uh, did Jesus not already know that he was coming to the Gentiles as well as the Jews? Did this woman have to challenge his self understanding for him to know that? And if he is fully God, how did he not know that already? So those are the kind of themes which are explored by people around this passage, this kind of um, argumentative conflict passage um, of Jesus and the woman. So that's all very well and very theological. But whilst preparing for today's sermon, I have been struck down with an earworm, you know, a piece of music that you can't get out of your head. Uh, so think back to 1977. Uh, I wonder if you're old enough to remember it. Not the year of the big heat wave. Instead, the year of Star Wars, Elvis Presley's death, and the Apple II computer, and the Bee Gees singing, How Deep Is Your Love? I'm sorry, lots of you will now already, even just me saying the Bee Gees and How Deep Is Your Love will have that song going around in your head. I was six in 1977, so um, I presume that's the year I first heard it. If you're younger, take that, do, do it later on. Um, it's quite, well, I think it was 1995, not sure. So this is the challenge that the Canaanite woman brings to Jesus. She's saying to him, how deep is your love? When she comes to Jesus, how deep is your love, Jesus? If you are God, Jesus, then your love is deeper than you think. Jesus denies, to start with, that his love is deep enough to reach her. Now, there are also theological controversies about how strong the insult is when Jesus implies that she is a dog. There are some theologians who argue that Jesus calls her the equivalent of a female dog with the same negative connotations as that would be today. She replies that your love is even deep enough to reach me and the people like me that you have just insulted. Then Jesus concedes that she is right and he is wrong. His love is that deep. God's love is that deep. And she understands whether or not Jesus did at the beginning of their conversation, how deep God's love is. 
So we have this kind of summary of, of what, what this interaction is and it ends up being a question where she asks him, how deep is your love, Jesus? Her daughter is healed, Jesus heals her daughter. And still today we can think about this, how deep is God's love? How deep is God's love? It reaches everyone, each one of us, however unworthy we might feel or however unworthy other people consider us. In 1995, Stuart Townend wrote a different song about Jesus' love, about how, about how deep is your love. Um, and I was surprised at the, some of the language in it when we go back to it. It has a very old-fashioned hymnic feel to it. Um, although I don't think particularly to do with the gender that we would maybe write it the same way today. This is what Stuart Hannand wrote. How deep the Father's love for us, how vast beyond all measure, that he should give his only son to make a tre wretch his treasure. How great the pain of searing loss, the father turns his face away, as wounds which mar the chosen one bring many sons to glory. Behold the man upon a cross, my sin upon his shoulders. Ashamed, I hear my mocking voice call out among the scoffers. It was my sin that held him there until it was accomplished. His dying breath has brought me life. I know that it is finished. I will not boast in anything, no gifts, no power, no wisdom, but I will boast in Jesus Christ, his death and resurrection. What should I gain from his reward? I cannot give an answer, but this I know with all my heart. His wounds have paid my ransom. How deep is your love? How deep is your love, God? It's so deep. It reaches everyone, even those considered unworthy. It reaches each person everywhere. Thank you for watching and I will um, speak to you in the week, this week when I do a midweek thought for the day. See you soon. Bye.